Well, let's head over to the Beko Kitchen and find out what Hungarian classic Chef Mark has on the menu this morning. A Hungarian classic, what is it? That's it, so we are making a goulash. A beef goulash. Yeah, so basically it's a stew, so we've got beef stock in there, we've got some smoked paprika in there, you know, that gives it some flavour. Caraway, peppers, kuma as well, so mm. a little bit of a New Zealand twist on there. Good time of the year for this too. All right, this yeah. is going to warm you up and it's going to stop making you feel hungry. <laughs> Working on that all night, I think. Okay, it's going to be hearty, <laughs> it's going to be delicious. Great to have you with us in the Beko Kitchen and we are making a Hungarian classic, a goulash today. So this is a traditional recipe, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, so this is from Hungary, but mm -hmm. I used to have this in Germany as well. You know, it's very close and we had some roots back to Hungary. So so yeah, I grew up on this and it's really, really nice, but basically it's just a, it's just a tasty stew. Right. Right, and if you, um, I guess if you add a bit more liquid, it becomes a, like a soup. Yeah, exactly. You can do it both ways. Yeah, which is quite nice, especially this time of year, you know. Add a little bit more stock, keep it a bit lighter, you know, cook everything in there and you get a beautiful soup. Or Brilliant. Or cook it down, have it a bit thicker, you know, put some tomatoes in there and richen mm. it up and then you've got a really hearty stew. Oh, yeah. sounds good. I've done, right. my, I've done my factoids about um, goulash as well. Oh, go on, tell us some. Okay, so it's from Hungary, of course. And yeah. <laughs> Goulash comes from the hungry word for herdsmen because apparently back in the days, herdsmen, this is we're talking ninth century, they used to dry the meat and the vegetables and put them in kind of like a sausage bag, if that makes sense. Mm. A bag made of sausage skin. And then they would just add water when they needed it when they were out rounding up the... Uh, Rounding up the sheep. Yes, it's like boiling. It's like pop noodles. Isn't there you it? go. Yeah, <laughs> boiling a bag. So there you go. A little factoid for you. But anyway, let's get back to the factoids on cooking it. <laughs> so chop up some chunks of onion. Yeah. So it, you know, it's a very rustic. It's a stew. It's going to cook oh. down there. We've got a uh, beef. Um, so you can use some stewing steak. So it's a really good, um, uh, a cheap dish. Yeah. You know, so you can you buy the shins of beef or the really cheap tough cuts of meat because we're going to cook it for a long time and get it, you know, get it all nice and get the flavour from those cuts of meat as well. So it doesn't matter if you get the cheap ones. Right, it doesn't matter whether you're using red or white onion? No, no, no. Yeah, no, cool. you can use white onions if you want. Right. Uh, you know, red's nice, a little bit sweeter. Garlic, that goes in there. But because we're going to cook it for a long time, just chop it nice and roughly and uh, rustically. <laughs> Rustingly. I lost I lost a clove of your garlic, sorry, Shit. Okay, yeah, it's like oh, another one. Put it there. back in, thank you. Right, so you give that a light season now, just a little bit mm -hmm. to start the flavour sort of going together. Don't want to over season it at this point. Okay. Uh, and we're just, you know, normally we just sweat down the onions, but because it's nice, it's, you know, it's a, it's a big flavour stew, so we're going to get a bit of colour on those onions as well, and that's nice. going to help us get flavour. So, and I'm just going to dice this steak, so just a bit of stewing steak, um, and I'm just going to leave it in nice big chunks, you know. Nothing worse than having like a, a soup or a stew and you get, you know, you just, you've got to pick out like the one or two bits of uh, meat in there and they're really thin and stingy, you know. Nice big chunks, that's what you want. Yeah, I hear you. And as you said, it's a nice cheap cut of meat, isn't it? So very affordable. And you and can make this and freeze it as well, couldn't you? Oh, definitely, you yeah. And, and, you know, once again, if you're going to make this and spend all that time on it, you know, just, just make a larger a portion. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right, so you start, you've got a little bit of colour in there. I'm going to put the steak in there, and we're just going to keep cooking, cooking that. Okay. Start getting a bit of colour on the steak, getting all those sort of flavours going in. Great. And okay. then and then we're going to start, once that's brown, we're going to start adding more flavours into here. Mm. Right? And you can see it's just really easy. You know, you can start cooking, prepping the next bit, and keep going, you know? Brilliant. Constant cycle. Okay, cool. Well, we'll come back and show you how to do more of this recipe in just a minute. We are in the Beko kitchen and we're finishing off our beef goulash. So, where are we at, Mark? This is looking pretty good. Smells well, great. Yeah, you got all those smells now. We've got uh, nice browning on the beef and on the onions as well. Now we're going to put the caraway seeds in. Caraway seeds. Is that your little secret? Yeah, so this will this will give it a nice flavour. So, just to go in whole, as it cooks around, they're, they're going to lightly toast. They're going like to release all those flavours into yeah, the soup. Yeah, smell you know? that straight away. And then some smoked paprika as well. Very popular in a goulash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is this is well, those are your sort of key ingredients, and they're going to give you that flavour. So get that, get that in there. Nice. Give it a give it a nice stir around. And then I've got some capsicums here. So I've got some red and green ones. You know, we'll get the sweetness from the red, and we'll get a nice uh, sharpness from the uh, green, which is really good. Sort of balances it out. You're almost getting a little bit of sort of well, sweet and sour oh, in great. there. You know, leave them nice and chunky. And then we'll we'll just fry those off slightly, and then we're going to put some stock in there. So I've got some beef stock, which will pop in. So the red's sweet. The yep. green is a little bit more sour. Bit of a bit, yeah, a bit sour. And what is the yellow one then? Uh, in between. In between. Oh, there you go. Learn something well, every no, day. After, no, it's after red actually, so oh, it's even it? sweeter. Even sweeter. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, 
And then I've got some kuma as well, just to bulk it out, you know? And that's our little New Zealand twist on there. So, beef stock goes in there. You know, I said before, you know, if you wanted to make it in a really hearty stew, you know, you could, you're probably not in the recipe traditionally, but you could put some red wine in there, that'd be really yeah. nice. You know, a can of tomatoes, get real sort mm. of like, you know, rich, hearty stew. But they're gonna leave this a little bit lighter, so it's a bit more of a, a bit more of a soup. Okay, nice. Right, and then kumara. So same again, just sort of dice it up roughly. Have them roughly the same size so they all cook together. Okay, and you don't take the um, no, no, no. The peels off? No? No, all the flavours in the peel. Okay, there Skin, you go. peel. Nice. <laughs> and um, yeah, we just want to cook this a little bit first. So we'll bring it up to the boil, we'll turn it down. You can put a lid on it for about half an hour. Then pop the kuma in and sort of cook it slowly again for another sort of half an hour. And then just keep tasting it, you know. Might need a little bit more seasoning at the end. Um, we've got a little bit of parsley to finish it and some natural yogurt just when we serve oh. to put in. It just gives it a nice bit of richness. Uh, uh, and the kuma, when are we going to put that in? Uh, we're just going to give that uh, a little bit of cooking and then yes. we'll pop, pop the kuma in. So about half an hour okay. and then pop the kuma in and cook it for about another half an hour. Whew. But slower, longer is better equals more flavour. Okay, well half an hour, I guess that's going to time in perfectly, isn't it? Can't <laughs> wait to try it. So it's not ready yet, but we just added the kuma, so it's going to be about another 30 minutes. So sorry guys, you're going to have to wait. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Absolutely got it. <laughs>